Hi, today we're going to look at Andrew Sayers' Why Things Matter to People, Social Science, Values and Ethical Life. Uh, we're going to look at reason, values, vulnerability. We're going to consider evaluation versus imperatives. Uh, Pronesis, which is reason uh, and practice. And also finally uh, conclude with uh, teaching as rational versus dying processes and their implica and its implications. So uh, Sayer uh, says that uh, properly understood, reason is involved in values, feelings, and emotions. So, uh, and capacity and vulnerability are always in relation to various circumstances, whether they're passing events or enduring circumstances. Uh, he relates the story of Sayed's uh, suffering of the immigrants and how it is that you have to leave your home empty in order to fill it, how you have to leave your family in order to feed it, uh, etc. And um, in, in terms of scholastic fallacy, uh, we consider to avoid the theory practice contradictions, we need to check that the way that we account for other people's behavior is not at odds with the way that we account for our own behavior. And uh, uh, Sayer quotes Bourdieu who warned us of dangers of scholastic fallacy, where academics projecting their contemplative, discursive relation to the world onto actors such as us who have a more practical relation to the world. And uh, it's interesting that for later on he uh, cites Aristotle uh, and um, Aristotle says, nor is intelligence about universals only, it must also come to know particulars, since it is concerned with action, and action is about particulars. Hence, some people who lack knowledge, but have experience, are better in action than others who have knowledge. So it gives credence to, and credibility to, and value to, those that have practical experience. Uh, and, and so it shows that, um, lived experiences are valuable and that there highlights uh, in my view the, uh, the value of the individual and the uh, input of the student in the class is, uh, is a value, can make a valuable contribution. contribution. Uh, Sayer also argues that in everyday life we regularly engage in reasoning and uh, how we value uh, in, and that there is a reflection of how we value things and within, he uses the example of how children are brought up and what behaviors are ex uh, acceptable, uh, etc. cetera. Um, and we should think of values as sedimented valuations and uh, that they have become attitudes or dispositions which we, which we come to uh, regard as justified because of our experience with them. They're, they're not uh, automatic. Um, valuations they are developed over time and because they're so sedimented and I think that the more that you look into them then you uh, the deeper that you uh, go into your evaluations then you, you see where you're rooted uh, as an individual uh, but values are not merely looking backward but they're also looking forward and they do influence our action and that there's how um, and he uses the example of respect and disrespect with the individual who is disrespected then becomes sensitized uh, to the uh, uh, future disrespect and it changes the way that they act. So the individual might be more conscious not to be disrespectful to someone else. Um, interestingly, he uh, includes uh, as social scientists that value-laden terms are valuable. I thought that he highlighted this, uh, well, he used the example of the Holocaust. Uh, thousands died, the, the sentence using the phrase, thousands died in Nazi concentration camps, versus the, uh, uh, the phrase, thousands were six systematically exterminated in uh, the Nazi concentration camps. And the latter is more powerful uh, and more accurate because it includes, its, it, not only does it include the descriptive component, but also the value uh, piece uh, with it. Um, and uh, Ken in class brought up uh, just like, you know, the, uh, the millions, 15 million blacks that were uh, brought from Africa as slaves, uh, again, that value piece 
uh, added to that, uh, the number, etc., is um, is valuable in uh, projecting what it, uh, uh, the power of of the phrase. Uh, evaluations versus imperatives. He considers three uh, considerations, and uh, we'll uh, talk about uh, primarily two here. Evaluations uh, should be open to uh, criticism and revision, and we should consider this in, in our teaching practice and pedagogy. Um, hence, evaluative reasoning is not uh, no need uh, should not be used to close down alternatives, and. Uh, and I think that that there is important in our teaching practice that we remain open to alternatives. Uh, evaluation should not be taken as imperatives. So he uses uh, earlier on, he highlights an example that objectivity in the uh, epistemological sense is often associated with infallibility. Yet, if knowledge were infallible, it would be hard to see any reason for any objective realm, for the world would appear so perfect as a product of our knowledge that it would be indistinguishable from it. And uh, I think that that there is, uh, can be highlighted by illumination by contrast, where we need to see a dualism uh, in order to see the strength and the power of the opposite, or it highlights it. Uh, the third uh, was that interventions uh, pose a warning for the need for the uh, inclusive democratic uh, deliberations in deciding on prescriptions both as a matter of principle and prudence. And if we take that in the educative sense, then it, it's reflective of the process. And I think uh, rather than knowledge as an end or education as an end, it is uh, education as a process. And it's uh, uh, not defined by the imperatives. It's uh, recognizing the fact that it is an organic piece and it does grow and it does change. The, um, <clears throat> when uh, the, uh, Pinar talked about the, uh, uh, in the neoliberal uh, educative uh, environment that we are in today, it's interesting that Sayer uh, cites it as being, teaching comes to be modeled as a rational process of setting learning objectives, deciding how these are to be delivered, designing assessment procedures that test how far students have achieved the specific specified learning outcomes, as if courses consisted of separable bits of knowledge or skill that could simply be uploaded by students. And that's Sayer, page 59. And it's interesting that he acknowledges this in terms of the current educational environment, how technical, rational uh, it is. And uh, like rationality, he says, implies precision and rule following whereas reasonableness is inevitably imprecise, resistant to formalization, uh, and responsive to context and human capacities and frailties. And so it begs the question that our education system is really, it's, it's, it is uh, the rational, whereas our human piece with students is being reasonable, and which is more valuable. Uh, and Later on, he uh, uh, uses the donning process. He cites uh, Arpelli, uh, that, uh, and this links in with the rationality and the, and the reasonableness. He, uh, uh, donning processes are perhaps the main way in which people change their minds, especially concerning subjects they regard as important. And I think this is a critical piece in the, the whole book because do we want to educate by donning processes or do we want to have a, a deliberate attempt whereby we can be reasonable, we can be human, we can be relational with students and in, a, in, a, in an ethical manner that uh, it creates a positive learning environment where students are engaged and feel a part of the process. Um, so, uh, and the next step that uh, I, I see um, now in, in Sayer, he uses this donning process. The example he uses is how people get uh, rid of or uh, evolve from racial prejudice. So uh, it dawns on them at some point in time that it's not right uh, to, to be uh, prejudiced. And 
because it dawns on them, then they change uh, their behaviors. And But when we teach and we look at teacher education, teacher education is about the rational piece in the earlier quote that I quoted from Sayer. Whereas if you look at the dawning process, as a teacher myself, I look at uh, after 10 years or 5 years teaching, I realized that um, it, the relationship with students was more important than the information I was giving them. And uh, uh, by developing a, a positive relationship with students, then you're able to get uh, much more uh, from them. Uh, he uses, Sayer uses an example uh, in terms of process uh, for nurses, uh, nursing trainees. And I think that this can be applied to teacher education, whereby the first thing is that they learn to follow the rules. And then they acquire habits of thought and action. And then the expert nurse has knowledge or phronesis, which is practical reason, judgment, or wisdom. And so ultimately the teacher, the expert teacher that we have in the system, has practical reason, has judgment, and has wisdom. And that's it for today. Thank you.